Hello, friends. It's Dr. Susie Harris, and I'm here with you again with my podcast called Next Seven. Um, the general gist of this podcast really is to make sure we're paying attention to leaving a world behind ourselves for the next seven generations to have a way to thrive, right? So in my thinking, based on what I've seen in the last 24 years in my practice, if people could have access to clean organic food, clean water, and also access to functional health care, I think we would be offering them a chance to thrive. I really do. And I'm going to dovetail our elders in there because our elders need that same access to clean food and water and functional health care to put next to that medical paradigm. So today I'm so excited. I have my friend and colleague with me, Drea Tremels. She's from Soul Vibration Wellness. She's the old owner. And um, hi, Drea. Hi. I'm so excited you're here. Me too. We've been pals and colleagues and been through, I don't know, we've been together for six years doing stuff. You've got your own business um, within Cedarwood's space. And um, I'm just psyched you're here because this is part of introducing to the community the different uh, forms of functional health care, which you're definitely a part of that more than many ways, I would say. Mm. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm going to do a little talking about you for a second. So um, hold on while I take up the airwaves. <laughs> <laughs> so what I kind of did a little sleuthing and I knew some of this about you, but you're originally from Charleston, North Carolina. South Carolina. Oh, girl. I'm right. <laughs> What's that? Ooh, that probably Everybody starts fighting. Does it. <laughs> <laughs> South Carolina. And then in 2017, you graduated from the Body, Soul, Massage and Body Work School. And... You and I, I was just saying, six years you've worked in my office, helped me with clinical body work before I would adjust people in my chiropractic work. Um, and that, and plus just helped me run the place, which is awesome. Um, you've practiced meditation and energy healing for over 15 years. You're a master Reiki practitioner. I could go on. And the one thing that really I want to get you to talk about today is you've got 500 hours. You're a certified yoga teacher through 500 hours of yoga teacher training. And we want to get you talking about that and what you're doing with that and how you like it. Um, you're still holding workshops and classes. You'll get to tell some folks about what's coming up there. And I think that's about it. But I wanted to, I wanted to read your mission that you sent to me because it was written so well. Um, so here it is, your mission, Soul Vibration Wellness. The mission is to provide therapeutic healing to the mind, body, and soul. We specialize in body work, yoga, and energy healing for people experiencing chronic pain and illness with a special emphasis on marginalized communities and making care accessible through BIPOC Community Fund. We are on a mission to provide offerings that look at the whole person rather than a set of symptoms or diagnoses. By embracing the whole person, we embrace the beauty and diversity of each individual's experience and their journey to healing. What? <sighs> I just goals. love you. Life goals. I know. <laughs> when I read that, I just wanted to ask you real quick, can you tell people what BIPOC is so they know? I hope um, they do, but if they don't. Yes, of course. No, definitely. So BIPOC is Black Indigenous People of Color, and I have a fund, a percentage of all my tips go into that fund so that we can offer a uh, reduced price massage for our BIPOC community. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so before we get into this, um, I love people to get a sense of your heart when we do these podcasts. So I was just wondering, like... Tell us a little bit about you. How did you get into this? What what made you want to focus on helping people in this way? Yeah, so I've always been in the nurturing professions. I started out as a Montessori preschool teacher back in Charleston. And uh, when I moved to Vermont, I had spent about a year working on organic farms. And yeah. I came up here, I moved and was working again as a preschool teacher in Lincoln, Vermont. And I loved it. But something wasn't quite fitting for me. So I decided to go back into organic farming and I worked in Jericho, Vermont doing that and absolutely loved it. But I got 
a lot of chronic pain from back issues I had. And I was just realizing as I was coming to the end of my twenties that it just wasn't working out for me. I realized I didn't really want to own a farm and working for someone else is really hard to make a living as a farmer. So mm. um, I decided to go to massage school because I was a Reiki practitioner. I had been for years. Mm -hmm. I had gotten my Reiki master training a few years before that. And so I thought, what, what pairs well with, with Reiki? And I thought, oh, massage. And that's kind of what led me into this other realm and of complementary uh, and alternative offerings for wellness. And I ended up being diagnosed with Lyme at the beginning of my massage schooling. I actually almost quit school because I got so sick. And that's wow. how I found you. I started seeing you for treatment for Lyme. And I just I forgot about that. That's how I ended up there at Cedarwood. And so I remember it was like the very last month of my schooling and I, I was sitting on the table with you during a nutrition session. And I was like, do you need a massage therapist? And you were like, actually I do. And it all just like beautifully fell into place. So um, Lyme's been a harrowing journey, but it brought me to Cedarwood. It brought me to my, to a certain fulfillment in my life journey that mm. is really astounding. Mm. So um while I still struggle, struggle with certain things, I just, there's this silver lining to the experience that I have now mm -hmm. looking back. And mm. so it's, it's really remarkable and it's opened, it opened my heart a lot to people with chronic illness, with chronic pain, with these issues that I just felt such a desire to connect with these people and be present with people like this, because in school, um, we really learned that most only about 10% of massage therapists want to work with people who are chronically ill or in pain. They're not usually clients that are easy to work with. Mm. Um, but coming from my perspective and my life experiences, I was like, oh, I'm here for them. Yeah. That's yeah. Especially someone in place. Right. Okay. I mean, especially someone who can totally empathize because people look pretty okay, you know? Yes. They look pretty sort of, okay. Sort of hidden illnesses that mm -hmm. people, tons of people are walking around, especially up here in New England with it. And you can't look at them and tell anything at yeah. how terrible things are going for them. And to get that personal compassion for that edge of it, because man, people want you to stop it, you know, just get better already. You look fine. Let's get going. So it's kind of a, to find a practitioner that can hear you and has experience and ideas that can actually get your needle moving. So yeah, exactly. Amazing. It's vital. So let's talk first a little bit about your massage practice. Cause you've got so many arms of service that you do. You have two people working with you. Yes. I have an amazing team, Maddie and Maria. They're so incredible. I feel so lucky to have them. They are great. I love their energy in the office. They're awesome. And so in the like massage bowl, there's, you guys are doing deep tissue, Swedish, all kinds of body work. Do you want to talk about what you offer? Yeah, sure. We, we definitely offer a lot of the traditional work mm -hmm. uh, thrown in with some kind of unique offerings, such as you can come get a Swedish and a deep tissue and we might throw some warm bamboo on you. This is a technique that we use that we heat up these bamboo sticks and we use them to help release fascia. Oh. And it's fascinating. It's amazing. I've seen incredible work done with these. And once people try them, they're kind of addicted. So oh, bamboo, can you imagine? I got to come get on your table for that. <laughs> it's, it's really lovely work. And I just find that the fascia release is really easier, much easier that way. Mm. And just with all the research behind fascia and what we're learning about fascia these days, it's this connective tissue in our body. That's like holding on to so much. They think we're holding our trauma and our fascia. So if okay. we can release the fascia, we can actually release trauma without doing like 10 years of talk therapy. You might just be able to like actually let it go from the body. Wow. So How about just, that? I'm fascinated by fascia and the, the warm bamboo really helps me release fascia in a gentle way that doesn't have to be so um, aggressive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fascial techniques out there that I've tried or looked into and they're, they're pretty aggressive and painful. This yeah. it doesn't have to be though. So. Wow. I love that you mentioned that because we both know from being on the ground for a while, helping people that you can get all kinds of body work, but if you haven't found a way to tap in and release the emotional stuff, it kind of keeps you swirling, playing whack-a-mole. Which is what I love about the body work and the energy piece. Me, Maddie, and Maria, we all have some kind of energy training that okay. we incorporate into body work. And Tell I think about that a little bit because what does that mean energy work so people can yeah. get it if they don't know so 
for me, it's Reiki work. Um, for Maddie, she comes from an Eastern perspective. So mm-hmm. she's using that. Um, Maria has just a very intuitive sense of energy. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what she calls her training, mm-hmm. um, whether it's intuitive touch or I'm not sh- exactly sure. Yeah. But there's a distinct difference when you get body work with someone who is using an energetic perspective along with it. Mm-hmm. So I, my, and my perspective is Reiki. So awesome. And I know that you offer Reiki trainings as well, because you're a Reiki master. Yeah. So I, right now I just offer Reiki level one trainings. I've been asked to do Reiki two and I may in the future, but mm-hmm. right now it is Reiki one and I've been doing them for about five years now. And they're really amazing transformative experiences for people mm. that are, it's, it's really magical to see mm-hmm. the Reiki level yeah. one classes one weekend, usually with me, maybe sometimes two, depending on what I decide to do or how big the group is. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's been a phenomenal thing for my life and I've seen it do, have profound changes for other people. And I know you and I are in the biz. So Reiki is just a word. We're like, oh yeah, Reiki. Do you want to give just a a slight explanation for people who don't know what it is? Yes. Thank you for reminding me about that. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't forget. Um, <laughs> it's an energy healing modality that comes from Japan. It was developed by this man, Mikao Shui. And he, back in the early 19, late 1800s. And the story goes that he went into a med- deep, deep meditation in a Buddhist monastery and discovered mm-hmm. this ancient way of healing. Mm-hmm. And it's basically pl- placing on of hands and allowing Reiki energy to flow through you, through us. It's universal love energy. It's not something that can hurt anyone. And it can really help bring out just physical healing, but also this emotional healing we talk about Mm -hmm. and allowing us to release things that no longer serve us so we can physically heal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I would say I've had some sessions that were profound for me. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. It just felt like the person was holding space for energy to flow through wherever they were detecting. Actually, the body takes what it needs and leaves what it doesn't, right? Exactly. It's so it kind of comes in and- That the person's body is actually running the show. Like- I love that. I'm not here to run this show. Yeah. And I would say in my work, you know, I'm always looking for what is the block for this body's ability to heal. And my angle is, of course, like looking at food and any poor detoxification problems you might have, gut microbiome. But that energy space, if we have emotional issues kind of hung up in our energy field, it's a blockage to energy flow. Any acupuncturist would say that's going to affect organs and glands and your physical self. So I don't know. Would you agree? I feel like Reiki touches that system really amazingly. Yeah. And most of these modalities, most of these lines of study, they're kind of all saying the same thing. They're just coming at it from a different perspective. Right. Right. So it's like in yoga. Yeah. Like the Chinese have their meridians. These are the energy channels they work with in Mm -hmm. yoga. They're nadis. They have nadis that are energy points throughout the body. They have what they believe is the aura around our bodies. Mm -hmm. They're multi-layered energy field in Mm -hmm. yoga coming off of our bodies yeah Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. and like you're saying like there's these blockages that get stuck in these different or levels of the auric field that Mm -hmm. then cause us to get sick and for things to start manifesting physically so i think it's fascinating because eastern medicine a lot of these modalities are five thousand plus years old and i'm Mm -hmm. just like i don't know i don't know how they could be wrong (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right Now I'm going to segue. I want to come back though, to your lymph drainage massage, because that has helped my patients so much. But speaking of yoga, Mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. So you're training 500 hours of certified yoga teacher training. Yeah. I just finished 300 hour last summer. It was a magical experience. Um, And I think that yoga to tie into the lymphatic work is Mm -hmm. something that is in incredibly good for every system of the body, but I especially love it for lymphatic work, but I also really love it for dropping into parasympathetic nervous system space where we Mm -hmm. do so much of our healing Mm -hmm. and where that's where we need to be. I feel like to deeply heal. So kind of with my yoga training, I've been trained in a lot of different types of yoga, but what I love to do is the restorative work and the yoga nidra work. Yoga nidra is, um, 
meditative sleep. Basically it's yogic sleep. You're not technically sleeping, but you're in that sort of in-between place Ooh. where it's your brain waves are similar to when you go into deep meditation. Ooh, that and sounds then, good. Oh, it's so yummy. Not then, while driving. Not while driving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never while driving. It's very hypnotic. Okay. Um, and I have a I'll have, I have a free recording that I want to share with your listeners, which I'll, we'll pass along. I'm sure in the show notes, but, um, so my other favorite thing to do is yoga is, with yoga teaching is restorative yoga, which is this very also relaxed state where you're laying in certain positions for long periods of time, tapping mm-hmm. into your breathing and allowing the parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system to turn on. Wow. And it's just, it's like, it says it's deeply restorative to our nervous mm-hmm. systems and to our minds. Um, we're running around in this culture so much in Mm -hmm. this pathetic and we're just like constantly going and going and going. And so for me, what I want, I really, my goal is to help people tap into that calmer lake inside of the body and mind where they can Mm -hmm. truly be at peace and be still and at ease. So that's amazing. And just to verify, I'm not verify, but sort of like give a slight explanation to folks who might not know you have two parts to your nervous system. Mm-hmm. voluntary and involuntary. The voluntary is for like doing things on purpose, picking something up or whatever. The involuntary is for running healing, blood sugar balance, gut health, immune system. That part has two parts again, fight or flight. I'm running from a bear. Oops, it wasn't a bear. Let me get <laughs> back into my other parasympathetic, which is the healing and regulating hormones. And if I'm hearing you right, the work of the yoga nidra as well as the restorative helps bring that healing parasympathetic up so it can start regulating and running stuff exactly yep they're really powerful especially they've done a lot of research around yoga nidra in recent years and it's really astounding what it can do for healing it's it's mind-blowing honestly and it's not that it's a pretty new style of yoga it was developed in the 70s Mm. from um, an indian yogi do you have any stories of somebody you worked with where you were like, oh my God, this stuff, what it does for people? Yeah. I, I, the recording actually that I want to share with folks, I give it to a lot of my clients, especially those who are dealing with anything chronic. Mm. And I had someone recently sent, um, respond to me, email me back. And they were like, wow, that, that actually allowed me to settle. I slept better. Mm. I just had less distracting thoughts. My anxiety was less. Mm. So, and that was just after she listened to it one time. Wow. That's so cool. Whoa. That's incredible. Um, and it is deeply healing. I tell people like yoga Nidra is gentle, but don't be deceived. Same thing with my lymphatic drainage work. I'm like, it's extremely gentle, but it's profound you can't don't underestimate what might happen so. just because it's a subtle approach doesn't mean it's not a deep profoundly moving thing exactly uh deeply detoxing and in, in terms of the lymphatic or like deeply relaxing but also can be deeply i'm trying to think of the word i want for this but it's almost like a not just it's not just about relaxation you're actually able to allow what doesn't serve you Mm. to release from your body. (laughs) That sounds like a gift. (laughs) It really is. And I tell people, go, go slow with these things. Like don't rush into doing like yoga nidra every night Mm. necessarily. Like try like every few days Uh because I took, when I took my yoga nidra training, we had to do a 40 day, every day yoga nidra challenge. It was part of the course. How'd that go? week. I couldn't, I had to contact my teacher and be like, yo, this is way too much. (laughs) Oh girl, slow down. (laughs) It was was incredible. It was incredible. You just were moving toxins too much. And exactly. I was probably emotional too, right? Because we hold. Yeah. I love that. It was cool. (laughs) But I was like, (laughs) so I'm hearing you relate the parasympathetic healing, the nervous system that regulates hormones and digestions and sleep cycles and brain fog clears and all that good stuff. Um, You're talking about lymph. I wonder if we should tell people what lymph is and talk about your massage along with the yoga that affects it. 
Yes. So lymphatic drainage is sort of this new buzzword that's come out in the bodywork world. It's pretty well known in certain communities, especially uh, any community around surgery, specifically mm -hmm. like body sculpting or mommy makeovers or that sort of um, cosmetic surgery world. Mm -hmm. They've been about lymph for a long time. It's essential to recovery for those types of surgeries. And I do work with people who um, have those, but the lymphatic drainage, what it's really doing is reducing the inflammation of the body significantly. Mm. And it's allowing your lymph system, which is like your body's biggest detox system, right? It's actually like picking up all this fluid that's leaked out by your cardiovascular system every day. And it's scooping it up. It's checking it for viruses and bacteria and mold and all this stuff that shouldn't be there. And it's sending out immune cells, scooping it all up, taking care of it and sending so all this, this is all heart. that's all in the lymph. That's just the lymph. The lymph. Okay. Is and, and it so travels back through the heart. You said, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an incredibly important system. Like doctors don't even know as much about it as I feel like they should, mm -hmm. unless they work in cancer. And that's how most people learn about their lymphatic system is they find out about it because they have cancer. Yeah. And too late. When you start Not too late. Cold, but... Here's the, here's what the issue is. Like maybe you need lymph nodes removed or whatever, but I'm really on a mission to try to get the, the message out about lymphatics because mm -hmm. lymphatics can actually work as preventative. Mm -hmm. It can help mm -hmm. you prevent issues. There's new research coming out that it's showing it can help slow down or prevent dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, that's amazing. Because that makes sense to me. Right. Because it's actually reducing inflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's why it's so good for people who have like Lyme and MS and certain chronic issues that are inflammatory related. Mm -hmm. So, and I can see it. I can see a change immediately, usually within one session. Just how I the tissues feel to you less boggy. I Less can swollen. feel it in the skin tissue, but I can look at someone's face and I can oh. see where the fluid has drained. Wow. And it's remarkable because I can't really see that in other body work. Like uh -huh. I can give you a deep tissue and you can tell me you feel great, but I can't look at the muscle and say, oh yeah, look, that muscle looks looser. Mm -hmm. I can't see that. I don't know anyone who yeah. can, but with the lymphatic work, when I give someone lymph drainage within that hour, I can literally see. Wow the effect. And that's Isn't pretty that cool. cool. It's a pretty fun thing to be able to see. That's amazing. I just want to bring a little more light on when I came through training as a chiropractic physician, we, t we were taught that, you know, anybody in the medical profession or body work profession that you've got the circulation system, which carries blood and you've got the lymph system, which carries lymph. And when our bodies are going through the digestion or an immune event where we kill a virus in our system or whatever, the toxins that come from that, even just exercise creates some biological toxins. The body dumps that into the lymph system. It's a it's different set of vessels that's carrying the waste from your body's many processes that go on. And if it's flowing right, it gets filtered by the liver and by the kidneys and the toxins that get taken from that lymph leave through your stool and your urine and your sweat. And that allows you to not have any stagnant areas that are holding that lymph, creating inflammation. Right. And so the work you're doing is going in and detecting areas that are blocked from moving and opening that up so that lymph can move. And that of course, ends up in reducing inflammation, water retention, brain fog. And if you're somebody dealing with chronic Lyme, autoimmune, cancer, or any of those things post-COVID, boy, you get the lymph moving and you get inflammation down and a lot of the symptoms that are seemingly unrelated yep. can shift. I've seen it. It's so cool. And I'm so glad you do this work. Yeah, it's powerful. And it's, I mean, it's rewarding on my end because I see, like you're saying, these results so much faster and mm -hmm. every type of body work moves lymphatics. Like sure. if you go get a Swedish, you are moving the lymphatics. But the nice thing about lymphatic drainage is we're really honing in and it's a very gentle process. And it within about five minutes, I find that people settle into that part of the nervous system that does the healing. They settle That's in because so cool. it's very rhythmic and it's very gentle. And so it allows the body to almost feel like it's being rocked. And mm. so that creates this sort of safety in the body and people can relax and fully be in that sort of meditative state. Mm -hmm. So 
I see that's a so lot cool. Of I mean, it just keeps speaking to like your focus is on whole body health, right. and and if we're, I feel like it's so much about having tools to detect an area that's not moving like it could and helping it open, whether it's um, fascia, lymph, energy, body. Um, so super cool. Um, let me think about this. Um, I wanted to talk about, go ahead. I I did want to say about the inflammation, keep the inflammation in the lymphatic is there's been new research that came out that shows that there's sort of this vicious cycle that can happen. So you get inflammation, it, it kind of affects your lymph. And then in turn, the lymph gets slowed down. And so the inflammation can get worse. And Mm -hmm. so it kind of like there's becomes a feedback loop a little bit that can occur. So that's Mm -hmm. another reason I really encourage people, like, even if you don't necessarily feel like you're ill or like that you're not having any serious health issue at the moment, Mm -hmm. we're all being exposed to toxins and chemicals in our world at this point that are causing some underlying inflammation. Mm -hmm. And just rather than let it get to a point where you have symptoms, move the lymph first, like Mm -hmm. earlier on to help prevent the buildup. Mm -hmm. And some of us, there's also some research that's come out recently that was talked about how some of us just our lymphatic, the way that it developed when we were children, Mm -hmm. it's just not that efficient sometimes. Like some of us just have less vessels, less nodes. It doesn't work quite as well. And Mm -hmm. it's just genetic. Cause I had, that's a question I get a lot from my clients. They're like, why do I have so much trouble with my lymph system? Like, why, Mm -hmm. why? And I'm like, honestly, it just might be genetic. Yeah. Sometimes it's your body's anatomy. It is. It's just Mm -hmm. an anatomical issue. And any injuries you've had along the way that left you with scarring or fascia issues. A hundred percent. Yes. Well, I was curious. One of the things I'd like people to also know is like, what inspires you? I know coming through your training, you might've had people or what, what, how would you, uh, yeah. Who's inspiring you these days or who has in your past? Yeah, I think that I'm definitely inspired by nearly everyone, everyone I've met through Cedarwood. I think that there's something about the office that it draws in some really phenomenal practitioners. Hmm. And I just learned so much from the varied people that have come through over the years. Mm -hmm. And I just learned, I just learned so much from everyone there all the time. And I've also really been inspired by my Reiki master, the the woman who taught me Reiki. Mm. Um, her name's Chris, and she's been holding together this incredibly tight knit community of energy workers down in Charleston for twenty plus years now. And she continues to kind of develop, and she just she leads with so much grace and love and kindness, mm. no matter who walks in the door. And we used to be based, I'm not sure if she still does it there, but we were based out of a church in North Charleston and North Charleston's a really, really dangerous city. When Mm. I was living there, it was one of the most dangerous cities in America. Wow. And and we didn't lock the doors to this church. And every Tuesday night we would have open free sessions for Reiki and, and meditations together. And we had many a person come in with mental health issues, challenges, um, Mm -hmm. drug challenges, Mm -hmm. situations that were unpredictable. And I just always saw this woman lead people and talk to people and be present with people in this way that created safety for everyone, created an environment where people felt peaceful. Like there would be people that would just come in and sit and watch and they wouldn't necessarily participate, but the atmosphere she helped create and hold Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. And oh. we, I never felt unsafe there. Isn't that something? I was surrounded by, by, by violence and there Wait. could have easily have been something that could have happened. And in the 20 plus years, I know she's been doing it there. Nothing, nothing ever happened. Boy, doesn't that speak to setting the environment? Setting intention. Yeah. I learned a lot from her about setting intentions. The intentions that we come into our experiences with, come into sessions with our clients into our day like it's just huge Mm -mm. totally different platform to come from so good I love it 
Well, I know we wanted to make sure we talked about, um, you've got some cool stuff coming up. You've got some classes and you have a retreat for practitioners. And I want to make sure we leave people with information on how to find you. So yeah. let's talk about your classes, workshops, and maybe this uh, retreat for practitioners you're doing. All right. Yeah, definitely. I'm currently not teaching any group yoga classes. So if you want to do yoga with me, you can get a hold of me and I will I do privates right now. And I will do group if it's like a family and I can come out to your home and I'm happy to do that with a group of three or more. So, but still it's more of a private setting is how I'm working in my yoga world right now. Awesome. And yeah, it's really, it's really fun because I love to personalize yoga mm. for people and I just see results faster for folks mm -hmm. and it's, it's just more fun for me. Awesome. Like, you got to do what you love. Yeah, exactly. It just, it fills my cup. And I, oh. I know that if I don't fill my cup, I can't fill other people's cup. Right. So, and yeah, I feel like it's just a joy and let's see Reiki classes are going to be coming up. I have a Reiki level one coming up. That's mm -hmm. probably going to be around December, January dates are to be decided but that keep an eye on my website. I do have a whole section dedicated to Reiki certifications right awesome. there at the top. So people can just click that and find out all the latest info and get on my waiting list. Okay. That's awesome. So we'll make sure they get the link to your website. Yes. And what's the, um, the practitioner retreat that you're talking about? Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a retreat that I'm going to be hosting with my amazing yoga colleague, her name's Katie O'Brien. She's based out of Savannah, Georgia. And we hosted a retreat this past year in March down in Costa Rica together. And it was so much fun. We did a wow. yoga and surfing retreat and we're going to be going to Puerto Rico this time. And it's going to be about a year from now. So if people want to get on the wait list for that, they can also do that through my website. There's another button, very clear. It says retreats. And um, we're going to be focusing on wellness and really entrepreneurs in general. Mm. I'm really hoping to bring in wellness entrepreneurs. I feel like we are the people that give, 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 give. And I we feel like I need to be time. on this list. We need time to like take care of ourselves, but also to share information, to come together and trade knowledge mm. and educate one another. So I love that it's going to be this rest and relax portion to it, but there's also going to be an educational piece. And we're asking folks that if you want to be a part of it, think of an offering that you can bring, whether it's teaching a yoga class, if you're a yoga teacher or teaching about the lymphatic, maybe showing someone how to drain their own lymph mm -hmm. or, you know, something that's in your tool belt that you could easily teach in like an hour, an hour and awesome. a half that you could that bring. That's so cool. Yeah. I so come. Yeah, I hope you can. It'll be really fun. Uh, we're currently very excited about the locations that we're scouting for it. It's going to be very magical. Awesome. So, and there'll be lots of fun activities. Like it will have plenty of space. We like to leave a lot of breathing room for people and we don't like to overschedule people. We mm -hmm. really, this is for everyone to make their own choices and to have that <clears throat> time to just be like, I need to just be at the beach for three days. And that's where I need to be. Or like, I'm going to go ride that horse, go on that hike, get a sound bath, like, you know, quickly massage me. Vroom, vroom. I, need a, I need a massage. I'm going to go surfing tomorrow. Like if that's who you are, you, we have, we have it. You. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Still, we've got plenty for you. Like, so it's a it great sounds amazing. How many days is it? It's going to be six days and, or six nights and seven days. Yeah. And it's that sounds right amazing. now it's going to be probably January, 2025. So it's about a year. It's a little over a year out from now. Mm -hmm. So there's still plenty of planning time. People need a planning time. Nobody don't, don't panic. It's like, it's going to be really beautiful. So that sounds yeah. amazing. I love it. So you also talked about, uh, you have a podcast yourself. Yes, I just started my podcast in August. I'm Yay. so excited about it. So I'm a nerd and I do a lot of research on my own. I've been doing this for years and I'm always just like in my free time, like looking up stuff and being like, oh, what about this? What about this mm -hmm. new health research? What's going on in this field? Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to start compiling it and actually putting it into a podcast. So the podcast cool. is just called Soul Vibration Wellness Podcast, named after my business. And it, it they're really short episodes. They're 20 minute bite-sized drive in from the house to work, work to the house Beautiful. kind of. Episodes. So they're really 
digestible, but there's a lot that I pack in there. And I'm mm-hmm. trying to help people figure out like life hacks and tech that can be helpful and just amazing things that unless you're digging, you wouldn't hear about it in the regular sort of news feed world. Yeah. So I'm over here just like nerd now on like, you know, scientific research and being like, oh my God. I <laughs> so, love this. That's so good. Really fun. So- soul vibration wellness podcast we'll put the link to that in the notes to this podcast so people can find it and you said you want to plop a free recording in there yeah i'd love (laughs) to send people the free yoga nidra recording it's it's a Mm. a fun one it's a journey through the forest so ooh, lovely that's amazing (laughs) well i'm so glad you took the time to hang out with me i just adore you and your work is so important I ask this question every time and it's a little beat up of a question, but I love asking it. If you could talk to your 20 year old self, oh, this is so good. what would you tell her? <laughs> oh, I love this question. <laughs> you got to get like back in. What was I doing like, at 20? Yeah. What was <laughs> I doing at 20? I was living abroad in Argentina, like having a grand time. Awesome. Um, yeah but anyway (laughs) I think I would tell 20 year old Drea everything works out like don't stress Mm -hmm. don't stress about the money don't stress about what your career is going to be don't stress like you're you're strong you're going to get through whatever life throws you you've got good people in your life Mm. the the universe is looking out for you girl don't worry yes you know isn't that lovely? I love that. That seemed when I asked this question, most people do come to that place of don't worry. It's good. It works out. Even though you go through some stuff, it still works out. Uh, that's a that's cool. That's really mm-hmm. neat. That's where a lot of people come to. It makes it me really? happy because I'm like, oh good. People feel Thank like God. they've got them their shit under control. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <That's> great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Bye. all right. Well, thanks again for taking the time to talk with me and um, we'll make sure to get links on your webpage and your Facebook and Instagram handles so people can find you. Awesome. Um, and just again, to say to those of you listening, um, thank you so much for listening. And this is Next 7. This podcast is meant to help people lift their awareness and be a part of boots on the ground, action-based things to help make sure we are getting to a place where everyone has access to clean and organic foods and they have access to clean, healthy water, as well as these different alternative or I would say classic uh, functional healthcare approaches to put in your toolbox. So you're, you've got a nice, well-rounded way of taking care of yourself. And when you feel better, you have a little more attention span to think about what someone else might need that you see as having a struggle. So Thank you for listening and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.